you and Giselle and Robin go right. out for tea, did you kind of know what their intentions might have been going into that tea? I can read Giselle and Robin like a book. Okay, <laughs> these two coming to me for lunch, I was like, okay, what's up? Wendy shared with us. Oh, talk about it. Go ahead, tell me. She said that you had to kind of like bail Ray out with your money and that that was kind of like stressful for you. Karen was, you know, really intoxicated. I put half my money behind him to save us. Grandma holding it down. Girl, I want my money back. I need a return. <laughs> <laughs> it felt honest. OK. Are you going to tell Karen why I said? No. Yeah, so Robin and Giselle were playing catch up and were, were their hearts in the right place? Hell no, the messy ass selves. <laughs> but I love it. I have grown so comfortable. And, and what I like doing is catching Robin and Giselle in their shade moment when they think they, they're gonna rivet me and they can't shake me or move me. That is so powerful and it's hilarious. It's hilarious. But again, walking in your, tr in your truth is so comfortable. It's such an easy thing to do. I am an open book. Um, they just missed our Kiki moment. I'm sorry. Hello. Karen doesn't want anyone to ever talk about her. Like, how dare you discuss my personal business when I'm not there, which is completely irritating. Yeah. <laughs> However, Wendy, I don't feel was being messy or shady. She was just kind of letting me know, like, look, like this is a, a bit strange. You know, they've been married for 25 years. So, to say yeah. you want your money back <laughs> implies y'all aren't a unit. But I, I, Wendy wasn't lying. I think I, I said that during lunch. Ooh, There's some that's deep. a reach, but no, no. You're saying Wendy said that? Yes. Oh, well, that's not true. Karen definitely doesn't remember the things that she says when she's drunk. And I think, you know, she gets a little taken aback that like, oh shoot, I said that and people are repeating it and then she gets upset or whatever. I think it's something that Karen needed to know was repeated in case she didn't know that that's what she said because she needed to know that it's out there. And you know, you know, Karen, maybe you don't need to be saying this about your husband. Like that is your husband, right? Like you've lived a great life. So that's not something that actually I think should, like she should be proud of or she should say, so. Well, they throw everybody under the bus. They didn't have to name that child. They could have said it was a, a blue turtle. But no, of course, if you go to Robin and Giselle, you're going to get exactly what you deserve. They're going to tell on you, and they're going to pimp your story or pimp your, your life and, and make it their issue. So go ahead. So yeah, it, it was entertaining for me. I think Wendy, Wendy's going to watch this and say, aha, Karen's right. She's, Wendy's going to be my ride or die watch. Karen also at that point implies that Wendy might not be a real doctor because she's not a medical doctor. You say you're a doctor. She's not a medical doctor. She, no one <laughs> thought she was a medical doctor. No one thought she was. Of course, Karen is shading Wendy because Wendy's actually smart. I don't even think Karen understands what a PhD is. No, no, Karen, you have no D. Okay. <laughs> the end. You and Ray, we see you guys go to visit a uh, life coach. When his business was in trouble, I soldiered up. I made sure everything was okay with the kids. I held things down. I certainly feel, you know, remorse, regret, but I can't take that back. Uh, thank you for soldiering up, holding down on all the things that you did. Thank you. My heart still gets full because, um, you know, while Ray addressed his own business issues, I, I picked up the family, like the mortgage, the tuitions. I was in shock when I saw the first water bill. You don't understand, I have never paid a bill, but this is what I was raised to do. You soldier up, you lift what you can lift. I was not involved in the business, so I couldn't do that. But what could I do to help? And I didn't feel appreciated because I was, it was almost like when I did it, he was like, yeah, she's doing it, you know? And I was like, this is major and I'm standing by you and I love you. And just a thank you would have been okay, but there was no conversation about it. And there was no acknowledgement of what it was I was doing to sh try and show him that just as good as a husband as, as he had been to me, I was gonna be that kind of wife to him at this time. And to not get a thank you until that doctor's office, we were raw this season. All I wanted was that acknowledgement. 
You don't owe me anything. Even though I did say something in the past that was funny. I held him down and put half my money behind him. Mm. Just save us. Oh. Girl, I want my money back. I need a return. <laughs> <laughs> but I need a return. But you don't owe me anything but your respect and, and an acknowledgement. It meant everything. It, it was the thing that saved our marriage. It really did. For him to make that big thank you took so much humbleness in him to say to her, when I was at my lowest, you were my rock. She knows Ray to be such a strong man that for him to admit that to her, coming from his generation, that showed her that this man wants to be with her and wants to really make their marriage work. It's big. So I think it's taking some adjustment from, from Ray to, you know, adjust to, to a, a new Karen. I'm not looking for the past Karen and Ray. I like us today. I like, there is a, there's a new layer to us. There's a lot of humor. There's a lot of, <laughs> there's a lot of love though. Oh my God. Just, just to know that he's there. He is my spiritual partner. He's my friend, but we, we have a lot of laughter. And it's that one act of kindness that he gave me on film with Bravo that saved this unit because I didn't know where we were gonna go. I, we could have gone left or right. And for him to do that, not just to me, but in front of the viewers, I think it's going to rivet people because if they felt what half of what I felt when he did it, it, it meant everything, everything, but yeah. Karen still obviously feels very much in the middle of the, the Candace Monique situation, but this is where she first dropped, well, wait until everything comes to the light. Has your opinion of anyone changed in this? I, I can say yes, it has. But will I share it right now until we all know everything? I ask you to respect me being in the middle. He kept saying over and over again, Karen, that you just gotta wait for everything to come out. I, I would still love to know what it is that I don't know yet. Like, there's more, there's more. Where, 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 pray tell. Where is the more, Karen? I have no idea what Karen could be alluding to. And the Grand Dame, I know that she likes to keep some things in her back pocket. And I was certainly intrigued as to what she could potentially know about the situation on either side. Uh, you know, I don't know who, does she know something about Monique? Does she know something about Candace? Was there something that you felt like everyone wasn't aware of at this point? Things will come out as, as we move down this road, but let these women get on with healing. I saw a consensual fight between two women. That's what I saw. And that's, that's another mind that no one talks about. The gaslighting of feeling like, you don't know what happened to you because there's so many versions. different versions of a narrative mm -hmm. that are completely different from what you know happened to you. I spent months thinking that I was crazy. I have lost my mind. I imagined this chain of events. You know, and I just felt like everyone had an agenda or a need for, to ride this, this, this tragic incident, except for me. I wanted to see from Karen as Monique's friend, a more just honest and real approach to the situation. And I felt like she took it lightly on her and took some of the blame away from her and tried to just make it more of a, you know, it, both of them are equally guilty or equally, you know, responsible for what happened. And that's not, that's not the case. It really struck me in an emotional place with Karen because Karen was someone else that I trusted, that I loved as a friend that I looked up to, that I respected. To sit and watch her do this tap dance and this, to quote the African proverb, backpedal and pussy pop. Like, it just, it, it, again, it's like a mind boggle. It's a, it blows my mind. It blows my mind. To me, this was a much bigger issue than any gossip that the girls could have put down at this table because they were missing the whole point. We're black women, we got two sisters hurting. What are we gonna do? How are we gonna fix this? And certainly choosing sides does not fix this. Karen wants no parts. Oh, I don't wanna hear any of this. Oh my gosh, two wrongs don't make a right. And you were the one that told Candace 
to press charges. So now you don't want to hear about it? Karen, clearly you know that there's something about Monique and Candace that you're not telling the group. Hmm? Hmm? Yes. I love them both. And again, I saw that two wrongs did not make a right. But this is a serious matter. And, you know, why are we talking about this at a baby shower? This is a celebration. This is Wendy's moment. This is Wendy's baby's moment, her husband, her family. Uh, we didn't need to do that. You know, timing is everything. Talk a little bit about your relationship with your pastor and how that conversation maybe helped you deal with what was going on. It is not her fault, but it is something that you need to reconcile inside of you. Obviously what you're saying is right. There was a lot of pressure building up inside me that had nothing to do with her. <laughs> she didn't deserve that. Whenever we are going through anything, and even when we aren't, we like to consult with our pastor and just have a conversation and look for advice. And then, you know, a good prayer always makes things better. My pastor, he has been around since Chris and I started dating. He's not judgmental to the point where he's just gonna beat you up. You know, he'll tell you where you're wrong, but he'll also help you create that path as you journey forward. So that was important for us to just kind of sit down and just, you know, just relieve some of the stress and just get it all out. When I said to Monique, you gotta fix it, um, that was my cry for her to get the help that she would need in order to live the beautiful life I know she deserves. She really wants to believe in herself and wants to believe that ultimately she does what's right in the world. And, and she wanted to show everyone that. And she wants to prove, you know, that she had certain reasons for her actions. And I think that was important to her. And I realized that the trauma that she had suffered at the fight was still lingering on. My husband was very disappointed that his wife is involved in an incident that is so public and, um, and also so vicious. It turned from, you know, the incident, disappointment, acceptance to, all right, how do we move forward? I told the ladies that I felt as though I needed to take some time so that I could really focus on me and understand why I reacted the way I reacted. I went on a journey and I was on a mission to seek counseling, to really deal with things that I may not realize I never dealt with to figure out is there some type of childhood issue that triggered my response that day? What is it about Candace's action that caused me to step out of my own self and lose my own self-control? Okay, go talk to your pastor. But we all know, we've seen on the show, Monique talks to her pastor a lot. She goes to church a lot. So it, this shouldn't be something that like, is gonna be life-changing for you. You already should not have been in this space if you've, if you've already been seeking guidance from your pastor and you've, you attend church on a regular basis. Why do you need to go to your pastor for him to tell you that you wrong for what you did? Why don't you know that? I do believe Monique is remorseful. I think she realizes she made a mistake and that things went too far. To me, she was very apologetic. She was very remorseful. She was very embarrassed. She was like, I wish that did not happen. She knows she put a lot in jeopardy. Breaking fourth wall and all, this wasn't about the show for me anymore. This is real life. And I'm not taking this lightly because I don't ever want this to happen again because I have way too much to lose and I have three little people who look up to me. Let me see what happens in, like not tomorrow, not next week, but let's see what happens over the next six months. You know, like, so for me, I'm just like, talking to your pastor means nothing. You do it all the time. And I felt like that was just like, a cop out. Oh, I'll just go talk to my pastor and I'll ask right. my pastor what I should do from now on. Girl, bye. You know you were wrong. It's very painful for me to sit here because these were my friends, but when I said to her, they are my friends. So yeah, I, I hate talking about this. I can't wait for this to be in our past and we move on and heal. I had to deal with certain things so that I could recognize what my triggers are. If you don't know what triggers you, it's bound to happen to anybody. But the fact that I was able to find out what triggered me, now I'm well aware and I know how to walk away. Can you guys give us a brief history of Candace and Monique's rocky relationship? I, I wish I knew how to give a brief history of Candace and Monique's relationship. I mean, you all saw my first season. We hit it off immediately. 
at Ashley's Sip with Socialites event. This is my friend Monique. Well, Monique, busy? Hi. How you doing? Well, it's all Ashley's fault. I met at her restaurant. <laughs> And when I first met her, we instantly clicked. I loved her energy. I always say they are very similar to each other. They hate when I say that. Just so they don't like when I compare it's them. True. But they are very similar. So it was no surprise that they hit it off. I distinctly remember in Nima Colon. So that was season three. Monique could not stand Candace from day one would not tell her to her face. She thought that Candace was fake. She thought Candace didn't belong in the group. You know, Candace is a little and she's annoying, but I at least wanted to get to know her on her own merits. Then I think their relationship just evolved and they were buddy buddies and then they would fall out and get back together. We spent a lot of time together. I mean, the word, the word sisters was, was <laughs> used by, by both of them, you know, they felt like sisters. I just felt like a, a big sister. I wanted to look out for her in the way in which I would want someone to look out for me. And uh, that just turned into just something completely ugly. And I think it became a, uh, for her, a competition of trying to get everyone to like her. And she didn't like when I was friends with anyone but her. But as far as us getting to the explosion, I don't know how we got there. I, I would go to her house and I have my feet on her couch. I'm going in her refrigerator. I'm holding her baby. To me, that is someone that I would consider to be a, a friend, a real friend. There are women on the show that I don't have that kind of rapport mm -hmm. with. I'm just, I'll just give you a great example. I'm, I don't really care for Ashley Darby. I wish her well. I, I'm, I'm happy for her happiness, but I don't really care for her. She's not someone that I would invite, that I would get on my phone and text and invite into my home, break bread with, you know, do things that you would think of that you would do with a friend. I wouldn't do those things with her. This was, in my mind, a real friend. And, you know, I've heard and seen some buzzings that uh, she has sort of tried to, to, tried to negate that for the sake of her uh, history rewrite, she needed to diminish our friendship. And to the point where you are having me in your home, around your family, around your children, but I'm not your friend. So are, are you, what kind of mother would have someone around their children that they don't trust? That's the question that I would ask. Unfortunately, where we are today is a result of us not sitting down and talking through whatever issues that we have with one another. They have similar tendencies when they, they get in their feelings and they don't want to express it. They haven't talked to each other. Instead of hearing from Giselle or hearing from Ashley, they didn't go to each other. And I do fault myself for that in a sense. And I hate that we're in the position we are in due to lack of communication.